Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Florida Relocation Guide YouTube channel. My name is Adam Hancock, and today, like the title suggests, I'm going to run you through a study that came out that's about buyer intent in the state of Florida. But more importantly, I'm going to run you through that study quickly. The second part of this video, I really want you to try to stick around for this one if you have the time, is that I'm going to run you through a thought exercise that I've been that I created this week that I've been really ruminating on a lot that I think if looked at the right way could really divide a ton of what Florida is metro versus metro. So I really tried to pack as much value and my opinion as I possibly could in this video. I mean, I hope you see it that way. So without further ado, let's hop in. Okay, so a study came out this week that I was reading through that was all about uh, home shopper intent. So they were focused on the search creating a popularity bias versus uh, the actual purchase of themselves. So these people actually kind of putting their money where their mouth was. This was more interest level. And so if you bear with me for a second, I want to take you through a journey of this study. And then the meat of the video, there's been a topic that I've been, you know, kind of working through this week that I want to see if I can add you some value by explaining, you know, an interesting premise that gives you a nice way of dividing different pieces of the state of Florida. All right. So study wise, there is a clear, there's clearly, you know, most things, the consensus is that there's less buyers in the market simply. But of the buyers still in the market, which is a fair amount, record numbers are searching to leave their current metro. So they're in a metro, an IP address searching outside of their current metro. You know, major, like some of the major index websites, Redfin and Zillow and Realtor.com, et cetera, uh, record numbers in, you know, January, mostly January, a little February, of, um, of people outside of the current metro. You know, a quarter of the total population of buyers are not looking within the metro they live in currently, um, which is, uh, you know, three to five percentage points above you know, any comparable period, really. They took all of that, and then they ranked the 10, desire, the 10 most desired cities based on that premise in the entire United States, though. Florida happened to be, as the title suggests, five on that entire list. Some not so surprising, some are surprising, but I'm gonna run you through that real quick and then we'll kind of move on to step two of the video. So I'm gonna go from the least desirable to the most in the top 10. So number 10 was Houston, Texas. I don't know if that surprises you, but you know, Texas, Texas and parts of like Arizona and that are you know, benefit in a lot of the ways that Florida does in, you know, in the weather and Texas especially, like the, the climate a lot of times, the, uh, the financial base and stuff. So if Florida's not chosen, then Texas is chosen a lot of times. So Houston's there. Number nine is Northport, Sarasota. I would have thought it'd been a little bit higher, but some of these other cities are larger, so I could totally see um, that kind of thing. But Northport, Sarasota, Florida. Orlando was number eight. They're really making a push. You know, they have um, some large industry. They have the, uh, the school systems with UCF, et cetera. And they're like Lake Nona's making these real modern pushes. So Orlando's getting more popular, in my opinion. It's becoming more interesting. Cape Coral, Florida, which is, you know, very much like a, you know, boater centric town. I think more canals in Cape Coral than Venice, Italy. Um, there's a lot going on there, but that is below Sarasota and above Naples. Dallas, Texas is number six. Dallas is becoming a, like in a lot of ways, a lot of what makes Sarasota and Tampa so popular. Um, Dallas has a lot of that going on right now. So I know a lot of people are moving there. It's a lot more affordable than parts of Florida. Uh, Tampa, Florida is number five. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona to that point um, is number four. And, and then Las Vegas is number three, so Phoenix and Las Vegas. So I think a lot of people, in my opinion, like the Washington State, California, don't want to make the whole entire trek. I've had a lot of clients I've worked with where they went Arizona first and regretted it and then came to Florida, but um, it was closer at that first exit where Florida seemed like, obviously, corners of the country. Sacramento, California was number two. I'm assuming Sacramento, California is, pro I would assume the majority has to be in like interstate, like they're already there. They're already in California. I can't, unless people are hopping from Washington state or maybe job related, but um, I can see them moving from other cities they like l less in California to Sacramento. And then number one was Miami, Florida. Number, in like a big way. It was m more than double Houston, Texas. That actually surprised me because, you know, yeah, I mean, that one surprised me. I know Miami's popular. You know, the one, the one thought would be the, the, the Western United States. You know, Florida's always been really popular for, um, you know, New Jersey, New York, Washington, D.C., Illinois, a lot of Canada. But, you know, what COVID created, in my opinion, was a lot of the California, Seattle-ish of the world came to Florida a lot more than they were, where a lot of them were going to Texas before. 
And I'm wondering if some of the cities in California um, relate a little bit more to Miami because of all that it has going on, and it's very coastal. Um, so Miami's number one. Okay, now with that being said, I want to mix it up. So I could you know, run you through a study like I did. This is already on the internet. I can add context based on my opinion here and there. But I wanna do something a little different. So I've been, with the, the Miami being number one, ran me down a little bit of a lane where I was already ruminating on this other idea. So let me take you through a thought exercise and then I'm gonna give you some additional information based on this experiment, more or less. All right, so here's the, here's the scenario. It's created by me, overarching, this is my opinion, this one I have said it, right? This is my opinion, my thoughts. But here's the thought exercise to work through. So say something happened and you have to, you can only move to one place. You, you do not have the option, it has to be one metro, you have to base your foundation there, and it, you want it to be the most long-term, viable, stable, interesting, crash-proof-ish, housing-wise, and you can only move to one place. You gotta fast forward one step and say that you're already in Florida. This is a Florida exercise, there's a Florida hat on this whole thing, so it's not anywhere in the entire United States, it has to be Florida, and then let me throw you some weighted factors of what if I was running like a mathematical study on this, which I did not, this is in my head, but if I was, what I would add to the argument of what is the criteria. Okay, geography, one. No particular order potentially, but geography could be number one. Number two would be economics and industry. Number three would be variety of life stage. So could you stay in the same metro, the, all the different life stages, right? Because you can only live one place for eternity in this exercise. And number four would be more proof cases of smart, follow the money, smart people putting their money behind something to potentially show you what's gonna happen next. So that is this, this pseudo experiment that I'm creating. And what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna give you an actual ranking. I don't rank a lot of things in actual order. I make lists, but I, usually it's hard to rank because it's so opinionated. But I'm gonna give you an actual ranking. Of, if you had to pin me against a wall and say pick, I'm gonna give you a, a few in order of the most to the more vulnerable but still interesting on a list if you are following me on this study. All right, starting off with a bang, number one overall on this list, I'm going with Tampa Bay, Florida's Metro. So hear me out on this. This is the way, the way I thought through this. Okay, so geography number one. So I view as if you had to pick one spot in the state to live forever, I want it to be coastal because you're already in Florida, and I want it to be the most central version of the coast where if I had to be somewhere and I could access the other stuff, I would place this foundation. I think Southwest Florida, by far the best location in the state. I mean, you have central proximity to the other surrounding, so you're very close to all the action that's going on, but you're not on any fringe, because I think a fringe is vulnerable, central proximity is good. Um, I like the Gulf waters a little better. This nook of the gun in Florida and the shape and the wife's tails or whatever it may be, uh, seems to get less overall hurricane impact than a lot of other parts of the state. All these things I like. And then this takes me to number two on the, the industry and economics part, why not all Southwest Florida would be equal and Tampa would rise in this capacity is because I think what you need, in my personal opinion, if you wanted like the most kind of crash proof idea is you need a reason people need to be in a city, not just want to be there. Because you need, you need an economics reason of why they have to be in the city, why like the pay in the city would equal the housing in the city in some capacity levels out. Where like a Naples, for instance, you know, a lot of the money could be end of work career money. It could be money that, that was made in other states and moved there. And it, it, so it's, it's like a higher price city to live in that also doesn't rely on its own economics to support it, which is fragile to me. Um, if something happened, you loved your, say you got relocated to Naples and you worked for, I mean, Chico's I think is there, the clothing place. And what if that job didn't work out and you worked at their corporate headquarters? There's not five Chico's behind it. There's not five competitors that are based in that city. So you don't have enough industry where I think that's one thing that makes Tampa really up and other good location, but it makes it more industrial. And then you have, you also have an education base. I think it's like work and education. So you have uh, University of South Florida's headquarters in Temple Terrace. You have Tampa University. And um, so you have a, a strong backing as far as like students coming there and maybe not leaving. And then Tampa has some of the most open jobs at any given point in the entire state of Florida. It's the third largest city in Florida. For, so it's, it's a commercial hub of sorts. 
you have some large industry, like you have the cruise stuff, you have the defense, um, a lot of defense industry, you have MacDill Air Force Base, which is a large employer. Electronic manufacturing is huge. Tech data, Jabil, you know, they're recruiting entrepreneurs out the wazoo. The River District and all the progressive things that they're doing around downtown and the river and the urban districts of Tampa. So you got a lot going as far as like it's becoming in vogue. And that brings me to point number three. So we did geography, industry. Number three would be variety of life stage. I think this one's very interesting. So take my scenario, for instance. I moved out. So I grew up in Sarasota. We moved there when I was four from Maryland. So I was there my whole childhood, went to high school there. And I left for college like most do in Sarasota. Well, I didn't come back until I was uh, older than 30 years old because of life stage. So I left for school and I stayed away for work. And where I ended up was Tampa because I worked in finance and economics and I wanted options. And I mean, I liked the hustle bustle and all that kind of stuff, but it really was, I wanted um, guaranteed stability where in, in a guarantee that I had a fighting shot because there was enough organizations where it, was, it is competitive, but I did have a shot because it wasn't just you know everyone going for one job basically. So and then I came back to you know so I skipped all these life stages you know young young married young married one kid before I thought Sarasota was viable for me at the time. So this variety I think I think you can span the whole end of the spectrum from high school to college to to young professional to um, to first suburban house, to all the way to retirement here, because you have the orientation of this city with three counties, the, of the metro with the three counties, you have the coastal element, and you have a very big variety of suburbs. So I, I can't get into all this in this video, but you have like, if you just walk the life stages with me for a second, and you're, so you're a young professional, you have, you have North Hyde Park, you have Channel Side, you have a lot of mixed use spaces where you know, work and play is more blended. It's like, it's like senior version of college, basically. And then, you know, then you have like, maybe you have a young kid, you don't want to move to the suburbs yet. And you have like Hyde Park proper, Beach Park, you have uh, Old Northeast in St. Petersburg, you have um, Seminole Heights, Tampa Heights. So still urban, but maybe a little bit more family style house. You get to the suburbs, like maybe you're 29 and you need more house. Maybe you have three kids. Maybe, just, maybe you work from home and you can commute. So you, have, you can go east of Brandon, Riverview, Apollo Beach. You can go north to Wesley Chapel, uh, Tampa Palms, Zephyr Hills, Lando Lakes, you know, and get a lot of stuff out there. You, and then unique about Tampa Bay, because it's so far inland, that you can go uh, west as well and still not quite be to the coast yet and have West Chase and Carrollwood and Northdale. So you just have such a variety. And then, then you go to like one step further and you go to uh, retirement. You have really unique places like Dunedin and you have Terra Verde, you have St. Pete. Um, parts of St. Pete, you have areas where like it would be like dropping like a mini Sarasota or mini Naples in where but you don't have to leave the total metro and that's what I mean by variety of life stage if you had to pick one is that you can reinvent where you are in your life many times and if you weren't allowed to leave a lot of other places could not satiate that need and then my last point as my fourth you know where the, follow the money and you know I always think it's interesting regardless if you, if you think I'm full of BS or you, anyone, you don't know who to listen to, who to trust. If you follow what, you know, smart people with a lot of money are doing with their money, you know, what Jeffrey Vinnick is doing to Channel Side with Water Street, Sparkman Wharf, you see the, the condominium developers that are coming to downtown, you see the lagoon communities that they're building in Wesley Chapel and Wamama and Ruskin and um, San Antonio and these areas where they're trying to satiate the need of, you have everything but the coast which makes the suburbs more viable and self-sustaining on their own. Um, that stuff to me is always an indicator. It's the same builders that are in the game, Pulte's parent company, you have David Weekly, Taylor Morrison. These guys know stuff in advance, right? You know, Starbucks is built, Chipotle pops up next to it, Verizon pops up next to it. These things are they're well-planned, right? And they kind of have an idea of how many people are in a metro and what it needs. And if you see that stuff coming, it usually comes in waves. And it's a good indicator that they are at least think that this metro is the one. So that's why a really wordy way of why I'm ranking Tampa Bay number one, but that'll set the precipice of everything post Tampa Bay might be lacking a little bit more weight in one of the four categories, but still interesting in their own outright. Okay, so now that you got a really deep lay of the land, number two on this list is Orlando, Florida. So Orlando's metro, the reason I'm going with this is again, remember that we're only going on these four weighted factors. 
So geography is number one. I think Orlando takes a knock because my premise is Southwest Florida is the best location. This gets you more inland, but not that much further. Um, so I think you're coming into Florida, you do have lakes, but being that far from the coast, I think it's you an inherent kind of negative in some capacity. Now, industry and economics, I think it's right up there. I mean, it, it might be in certain ways more boisterous when it comes to job plus education than Tampa, but it's right in that argument. And you have a lot of large organizations that are based there, trying to come there. I mean, you do have a lot of affordability because of the, the sprawling nature of it. And then you have UCF and down, I mean, downtown Orlando is big and you, you have a hustle and bustle city. So I, industry and economics, I think it's in there. So th that's a big one for this list. I think it's right up there with Tampa. Maybe it brings you a little bit back from the negative you lose in geography. The variety of life stage, I think it's interesting because it depends on your experience with Orlando. If you're from out of state, like a lot of folks watching this video, Orlando is Disney, 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 toll roads and la la la. But there are, it's such a, it's such a wide area in that like Orange County and surrounding area. It's so wide that you have huge suburbs, huge suburbs that are charming, family-centric suburbs. The thing with being inland in itself, I talk a lot about on this channel about, you know, go away from the water and go to the fringes and all this kind of stuff and get suburban housing. Well, most of Orlando is that. Like, so the amount of suburbs you have that can um, provide new construction opportunities and let um, people afford their first townhome all the way to the family house, et cetera, in a, in a more affordable way than the coastal towns because a lot of the coastal towns, when you go west, you hit water. This one has, you know, Lakeland to its west. It has, you know, sil you have Celebration and Kissimmee and all this kind of thing. So interesting in that, right? And then the fourth one, um, where the money is at, that kind of idea, that's some really interesting concepts. So if you haven't, if you haven't checked out Lake Nona, N-O-N-A yet, really, really interesting stuff. I mean, they're like, got these like little hella, these little like Jetson style, like, helipad things that they're like fly they're going to like try to do these like fast commutes to tampa they have disney putting a lot of their organization in this area it's modern it's mixed use space i think the pga one of the major pga premises is there you have a lot of sports in this town um, so there's a lot of reason that it is close enough to the coast um, but it's so different than like a tampa that i think it's right in the conversation where in the same token i would knock a Jacksonville and a Miami being like, it's opposite on camera here, but being like that in the state because they are, they're very different from each other, but locationally they're very much on fringes. One is this, as far south as you can go and one is about as far north as you can go before you hit Georgia. Um, so I think there's just less people overall that can live in those cities. And then um, because of all the things that surround all of those ideas, I think Tampa and Orlando, I would rank better if I had to go to one Tampa was closed and I had to go to another. I think I would have to go to Orlando. Um, so that would be my, my number two. Let me give you one more. Okay, number three on this is, uh, it was a little bit of a struggle because I would say number one and number two aren't that far apart, but number three falls off pretty hard. And so, you know, I looked around a little bit. So my number three is the Sarasota, Florida Metro. Um, obviously like, okay, I, I am standing here now. I'm biased. I get all that, but hear me out. So, because I looked at, seriously, trying to find one that wasn't Sarasota. You know, I would not rank Naples over Sarasota. I think it's a lesser version when it comes to this kind of study. You know, I looked at Boca Raton. You know, I, you could look at parts of the Panhandle. You could go more inland and north and to Gainesville and all that kind of stuff. But I think if you had to pick a three, I think Sarasota wins. And so this is the way that I'm kind of rolling through the study. Geography, number one. I think Southwest Florida, yes. And Sarasota is a better geography than both Naples and both Tampa, in my opinion. There's nothing really above Tampa Bay. And Sarasota sits you 45 minutes to St. Pete, one hour to Tampa's airport, hour and a half to Fort Myers, two hours to Naples, Marco Island, Sanibella, Captiva, three and a half to Boca Raton, three and a half to West Palm. These are guesstimates. Um, it's similar to Miami. There's a ferry that down in Fort Myers that takes you to the Keys. Four to Jacksonville, Ponte Vedra, St. Augustine. Uh, Ponte Vedra, five and a half, six to Savannah, Georgia. So really nice proximity. So might, maybe the best in the state. I, I, could argue, I would argue that. Uh, number two, though, is where we really start to drop. So industry and economics. This one takes a big knock. That's why I'm saying it falls off far. Uh, Sarasota is not a place, like, you know, based on these other cities, is not a place that you would move to necessarily for work. Amazing town if you're independent in any capacity because we don't, it doesn't have all that hustle bustle that a lot of the other cities do that rely on work. Like a lot, I mean, there is traffic, but 
the downtown isn't isn't work based, so it's just very pleasant as far as like walkability and stuff because it's mostly hospitality based. The commutes are bad, but no one's really trying to get to certain work employers, and so it's different in that capacity. But you don't, but you do not have those work. That's why it is pleasant because you don't have all those work options. It would be a scary place to be potentially because of the cost to live in the town. If you weren't feeling really good about employment in another state that was stable and you made a lot of money where the perspective of Sarasota was good, because Sarasota versus other cities is expensive in, st in the state. Sarasota versus other cities out of state, a lot of times it looks good, but it's only because of that north to south perspective. So it takes a knock there. Number three is where it's a little bit of an enigma. It's a way smaller place than Tampa and Orlando, but as far as a city of this size, the, it has the number one multi-generational master plan community in the entire United States for five years in a row on its fringe, Lakewood Ranch, half Sarasota, half Manatee County, which is Sarasota's metro. You have uh, Welland Park, which is another huge one. Palmer Ranch was another big one. So for a relatively small place, Lakewood Ranch has over 30 neighborhoods. The oldest house was built in 1995. It has three town centers. So you do have a viable way where Again, there's a cap of perspective of price, understand. You have a viable way where a uh, variety of life stage, it's becoming more viable for young, young to young family to not young, um, more viable. Still a struggle, still not that many things to do for kids, um, not that many people with the median age of 28, you know. But uh, I could see it moving more in that direction if you had to pin someone down and say, what's the third one? is would you choose the location and figure it out in this kind of city? Or would you say, you know, you got to go Miami or Jacksonville as number three and four because of, you know, the industry. So there's that. And then number four is follow the money. You know, I think with, I think with all the master plan, um, you know, Sarasota is kind of the barometer for kind of a lot of this master plan development. You know, a lot of the junior versions surround Sarasota, but they kind of start in Sarasota. But I see a lot of money pouring in with a downtown Waterside, Fruitville Commons, a lot of Canadian investors. I think people are trying to figure out how to base themselves here and, and invest around it. So you're getting a little bit more of that kind of stuff here too. So again, way down, I don't know how, how many percentage points it would be down on this kind of study versus one and two, but I would do Tampa Bay, I would do Orlando's surrounding metro, and I would do Sarasota surrounding. All right, my friends, that is a wrap for this one. I hope you enjoyed the different style. If you did, let me know um, if you want more of this kind of thing. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and liking if you haven't already done so. Of course, uh, any real estate assistance we can provide throughout the state of Florida, buying, selling, investing, anything in between, all my contact information is here. Amazing team. We would love to assist in any kind of um, transaction you want to complete. And thirdly, the sunshinestateco.com, the URL will be right here. Free, resor uh, free relocation guides. I have analytical tools. We have a newsletter that comes out on most Fridays uh, that's different than anything on YouTube. And uh, a lot of it's an extension of what we do here. Um, so it all accumulates. Um, please check that out if you haven't already done so. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.